Hi, this is Laura Lee Waldorf, and we're here in Tucson, Arizona with Jeannie when we're getting recertified for Bonnie Pruden Myotherapy. Um, Jeannie, how did you discover myotherapy? Well, I discovered it in 1991. First of all, I've had a serious back problem since I was young and had spinal surgery in 1964. As a result, I wasn't able to even reach below to, to my knees for like 30-something years. Wow. With that, every so often, uh, added to a neck injury and, and jaw injury, the two things would meet and I would be really in bad shape. So in 1991, I was almost incapacitated because of pain <clears throat> and uh, dysfunction in my whole body. Almost. So I was living in Central America at the time, was not able to get the help I needed. It was cold and rainy and I lived in the mountains. So the only thing we knew was I needed to get out of the climate for a while. Came back to the States, looked for something, and I really couldn't find much. My sister had had a serious uh, shoulder injury and in surgery. And one of the things that helped her a lot was Bonnie Pruden Myotherapy. All she had was the pain ratio book. Okay. But that helped her a lot, plus someone who did acupuncture therapy. Uh -huh. So the idea was I would get help from them. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find them, so my two sisters worked on me. Aww. It took one to use the book, okay. to read and to point out where to go, and the other would do the work. And you're just waiting and thinking, it, it helped give it a whole lot, oh. but I was still in bad shape. Uh -huh. Couldn't sit for more than about 20 minutes at a time, mm -hmm. and I uh, couldn't write well, couldn't do anything. So uh, with that, we looked up, we went on, didn't have online at the time, so we found an address or a phone number or something for Bonnie Pruden Myotherapy. Mm -hmm. Got in touch with them and were able to locate a myotherapist. Unfortunately, the person lived about four or five hours away. Mm -hmm. But after talking with them and trying to see what to do, and in collaboration with a chiropractor I found who was also helping, mm -hmm. uh, we all decided that was a thing to do, to try it. Okay. So I went to her place, stayed there for like five days. Uh -huh. Intensive treatment. Okay. Every day, a couple times a day. Uh huh. Came back after that. I could stand straight. I was like at least an inch and a half tall. <laughs> That's a bonus. Much more free of pain. I could finally move again. Could sit better. Wow. Everything. Um, it, it was just a world of difference. Uh huh. So instead of being almost crippled, um, after a few weeks, I went back again. I had to do the exercises very faithfully. That was about all I did do at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, went back for another round of treatments for a couple of days. Then after that, I was actually able to go back to Central America and do rural work again, bad roads, driving a uh, stick shift, uh, four-wheel drive vehicle on bad roads, that type of thing. Great. You know, little by Just little. what I you needed. Able, <laughs> I was able to build up to it little by little. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I was really almost crippled and wasn't given much help. Okay, so, so now you're all helpful. <laughs> Little by little, the, uh, the therapist, Theo Fiebel, who worked on me, mm -hmm. had volunteered to train someone to, to help me because I needed a lot more help still to keep me going. Mm -hmm. And we arranged for her to go to Guatemala. Nice she bonus! Went, <laughs> she went at uh, three six-month intervals and trained people down there to uh, do, to do different courses. Okay. So we did three, I guess two-level courses uh -huh. three different times. So that started you not only on a healing so journey. I, well, I had to get all the materials together. I did the translating, all of that. Oh. Arranged the courses, help giving them. So after a while, people started coming to me and it was like, you know, you did you help so and so, or you could do this, and now help me. <laughs> so that's when I decided maybe I'd better learn what I'm doing. Okay, right, exactly. Take the next step. So I decided to go and study. So then where where did you go um, when you learned by and prudent my own therapy? It was the first group here in Tucson. Okay. So I was able to come here. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, the, um, so, your experience around after that, when you got your certification for Bonnie Prude and Myotherapy, what has been your experience after that? Well, it's, it's certainly changed my whole career. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've been working in, in hands on work pretty much regularly since then. Um, I work at the Marino Sisters Center in New York, 
where I was then. Mm -hmm. I, I intended to only be there about three years, but I've been there a lot of years now. <laughs> Cause it's Quite a few. <laughs> That's lots great. To, lots to do. Uh -huh. um, There's lots to I, do. I've, just, I've used it with, uh, a lot with geriatric people, mm -hmm. geriatric uh, clients, younger people, all kinds of injuries. Um, a lot of the people I see are missionaries, and they work in, in very difficult situations, yeah. physically, some of them. Right. Plus and they could have so stress. They expect, they expect to, to come back and say, okay, you know, I've got half an hour. Show me what I need to do for this type of thing. <laughs> it doesn't work quite that way. Right. However, that's the kind of a situation where they, they'll come back not in the best of shape. And mm -hmm. They'll do whatever they think they need to do to get in shape to go back where they were. Wow. And want to keep going for a while. So that's, that's largely the clientele I work with. So how would, how would you explain myotherapy? What exactly, do you use oils or do you have to wear, take your clothes off or? Um, no, I can work over, we normally would work over like a light t-shirt or, or something. Mm -hmm. On legs, I certainly want to see the legs. So if people wear shorts, it has to be something that stretches. Mm -hmm. Because when you stretch people and you do exercises with them, you need the material to give. Right. So, um, light clothing. You know, nothing like a waffle pattern, nothing like that. It's jeans. hard to work over. <laughs> jeans would be a hard one. You know, George, jeans are hard. Every now and then I'll do something fast over, you mm. know, in conditions of that type, but not, not normally. If they come into my, my, uh, my clinic for a work, then we, we will dress them more appropriately. I keep a few uh, extra t-shirts around and shorts or things if people need them. To, so they can, that's yeah. a good idea. So that, that works. So and then they have to do the exercises. That's part of the treatment. So the treatment is working with trigger points, I understand, and then passive stretches, and then the difference also is that you teach them how to work on themselves. That's right. It would be, first of all, pressure, and the person determines how much pressure. You know, okay. I don't determine because the amount of pressure I put depends on what the person perceives at that time. So it's an active therapy. They're letting you know so this? They're okay. supposed to. Okay. Some of them are shy, huh? Some will, some don't Stoic. say too much. But uh -huh. you can usually tell if people are, are trying to just bear it like that. No. Yeah. I, I, I try and encourage them to let me know what's happening and not to try and, uh, and just say, you know, I can take it, do it, you don't know. No. no. That, that's, kind of, that's kind of productive. Right. So it's, it's sometimes difficult to get people to really enter into it, but they do. They mm -hmm. let you know when it's too much. Especially when they... And it's followed by a, like a kneading massage. All right. Okay, which is very important to, to uh, even off the pressure to separate the muscle fibers once they've been relaxed. Okay. Okay. Followed by, like you said, an act of stretching. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, teaching the person the exercises that they need to do for homework. And homework meaning, what does that meaning look like? If they, don't, if they don't do the specific therapeutic exercises afterwards, mm -hmm. they're going to lose part of the benefit of the treatment. And why is that? Because the muscles will tend to tighten up again. Because muscles have memory, right? They so they forget. Do, and and uh, they've been, if they've been shortened and tightened for a long time, they will, re they will relax, but then they're going to try and go back. So I find the 24 to 48 hours after a treatment mm -hmm. is the, the optimum time for the, the most stretching. If people say they're going to go home first, wherever it is, mm -hmm. and relax and do everything, and then maybe tomorrow they'll do the homework, they're already losing some of the benefit of the, the momentum, yeah. They need to start that same day and mm -hmm. the next day and the next day especially. And then they will have really gained a lot. If they wait a day or two before doing a lot of stretching, they'll lose part of the possibility of, of what they can achieve. So do they have to do that's these? That's my experience. I don't. That's what we're, that's, that makes sense to me. I've had experience like that too. The, um, the, do they have to do that for the rest of their life, the stretches, or how does that work? You know, they have to do it at least until they're pain-free. Okay. And then if they want to keep pain-free, mm -hmm. they will certainly have to do a certain amount of, of stretching. I can't tell you each person would be individual. For myself, yes, I need to do it forever, probably. And it's a small price to pay. Oh. Considering what the muscles to, do for us. Next to being incapacitated, listen. There you go. There you go. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. When, I, when I get lazy and don't do them over a length of time, I start stiffening up and losing range of motion. Or I'll start having more back pain again. So you just reel it so back in again. A little reminder. Like, uh -huh. okay. 
<laughs> to it. Come on. My body's talking to me. I better listen. However, when I'm working with people, I always do the exercises with them. That helps you too. That's right. We we do them together. And then they can we see do you do it. Music and mm. music together, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, I normally have done considerable amount of exercise for myself. Perfect. That's taking care of the therapist. <laughs> That's right. So do you recommend this to anybody looking for like a second career or um, like in your case been injured? Maybe check it out like you did and then move into because we're are myotherapists needed um, on the oh, planet? I think they're needed all over. Okay. Um, I, I would greatly suggest it as a second career mm -hmm. or as someone who has a job but has a little bit of energy or has a need and can work on a few people a week here or there for a while at least and, and see how it goes. Many myotherapists do have other jobs mm -hmm. and, and don't work full time, which mm -hmm. is a problem mm -hmm. because we just don't fill the need. We need a lot more people who will do it. Oof, right. Most of the myotherapists I know got into it because of their own pain problems mm -hmm. or someone close to them that they wanted to help. So people who want to help people would be, would like myotherapy? Yeah, there are certainly candidates for it. <laughs> and uh, even though a person may not be in the best of health, like I wasn't, mm -hmm. surely, um, doing the myotherapy plus the exercises will get you into good shape eventually. Yes. That's great. Love life and life will love you back. Thanks a lot, Jeannie. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.